Good morning. Welcome once again to the Morning Touch. I'm glad you could come back and join us. Where we're talking a little bit today, one step further in understanding Jesus Christ and his identity. Because we as children of God need to understand who Jesus is. Because that is the way that we understand how to live. That is the key to understanding our purpose as children of God. So today, we're going to go one step further beyond identity and talk about where this identity begins. Last time we talked a little bit about the importance of understanding why we should not lose our identity. In 2021, now more than ever, the church needs an identity. In 2021, now more than ever, Christians need to be an identity that separates them from the world. The Bible tells us, as Peter writes, that we are a peculiar people, a holy nation. John tells us, that, and James, that we've been set apart from the world. Unfortunately, what has happened today is the culture has tried to merge with the church and create something that God is not pleased with, something that takes away the glimmer of the cross of Christ and what it means. You know, my grandmother once said, you should never play with God, but I'm afraid in 2021, Many churches and Christians have not gotten my grandmother's memo. Playing with God is dangerous. And when we look at allowing the image and the influence of Jesus Christ and the power of Christ to slide, we need to rethink where we are. That's why we're doing this series. You know, the, the, the Morning Touch is brought to you by the Chaplaincy for the Homeless and the FSBC in Glendale, because we want you to understand where salvation is. It's in Christ. But unless we are able to separate and set ourselves apart, if we are merged with the world and its culture and the issues of the world, you can't tell the difference. So let us start today's lesson by talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is at the center of who and what the church is all about. We're not talking about a man or a group of men. We're not talking about lionizing any one person but Jesus. We need to understand that Jesus is where we need to be. You know, he came down from heaven in Matthew 1, the Bible says he came to save his people from their sins. It is the ultimate message of the gospel that this Jesus left heaven in all of its glory to try to reach out to a man who was lost and dying in sin, a race that was lost and dying in sin, a people who could not save themselves. Yet, Today, we try to erase his influence out of everything. Even in America today, they've tried to erase the influence of Jesus out of the school system, erase the image of Jesus out of our government. And then it's gone one step further worse. There are some who want to attack it, even to erase the influence of Jesus Christ himself out of the church. That is why I'm doing this series, because I want you to understand that man may erase him out of the schools, man may erase him out of government, but he must never be erased from the church. His influence, his word, and his authority must always exist in the church. And we, the carriers of this truth and justice, must stand up and say, we will stand on the word of God because of who Jesus is and because of what he's, what he's accomplished. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible tells us that at his baptism, the heavens were open, revealing the king's realm of authority. His authority must 
be understood in the church by every Christian. The world may not know it, the world may not understand, the world may not even care, but we are the ones who are the peculiar, the set apart, who must know in our hearts, and it must be written on the front of our hearts, and even on our pews if we have to, the fact that this Jesus was anointed to be king, and that he has God's authorization. The Holy Spirit descended like a dove, indicating the spiritual nature of Christ's reign. When you look at the fact that the voice from heaven, while he was there with John the Baptist, the voice from heaven, the, uh, from the eternal God, revealed the divine favor of this Jesus in the presence of mankind. How can we deny the authority of Christ? How can we not respect his sacrifice and respect his example? for what he has done in that one simple incident where the voice of God spoke that this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Number two, Christ demonstrated while he was here his authority. Why should we listen to him? Because first of all, God endorsed him. Why should we listen to him? Second of all, because of the authority that he presented. When Jesus was here, he walked on water. When Jesus was here, he expressed authority over nature. He said, peace be still, and the storm went away. He walked on the waters, and he did not sink. My friends, Jesus himself established himself as king, as king over all, given that authority. It was he who had authority over disease. Time and again, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see he healed the sick. He healed a blind man. He healed someone sick of the fever. Over and over and over again, he demonstrates his dominance over disease. And then third, this Jesus that we should respect and know, this Jesus demonstrated his extreme authority over death and demons, in that we see that it restored the daughter of Jairus in Mark chapter 5, verses 35 through 43. We see that he brought Lazarus back from the dead after being in the grave, and he, the Bible says, was stinking in the grave, but he brought him back to life. This is not some fly-by-night snake oil salesman. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we as children of God, as we examine this series, need to understand we don't need to play with God. We don't need to alter his authority. We don't need to change. What we need to do is to listen to his words and follow his principles. He has demonstrated that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords by having these examples of dominance over nature, the demonic world, over death. He cast out demons and even the demons respected him. My friends, what more evidence do we need to establish the firm and full identity of Jesus Christ and his authority in the church? We should not let and must allow no one to take away from that great authority and that great power because he has earned the right to be the head of the church. He has earned the right for us to respect him and love him and follow him because he died a king. When we think about what has happened, he was crucified on the cross. And the will of God to save mankind was completed when he said, it is finished. It was the end, but it was also the beginning of a new walk and a new way for mankind. John 19, 19 tells us Jesus Christ, King of the Jews, he died for the sins of the world. Not only that, we need to respect the fact that he, this Jesus, conquered death as the king. When we think about that third day and the stone rolled away, he rose again. Death could not hold him. The grave could not conceal him. No one could keep him from coming out.
because his resurrection was sure. It was promised and it was fulfilled and we can take stock and take value and confidence in the fact that we have the same hope because of Jesus. My friends, when I look at the identity of the church, there is no way if we stand on the word of God that we should lose our identity. The only way we lose our identity is when we bend and shape ourselves to the whims and the ways of the world. When we curl under and when we try to acquiesce with the world so that they'll love us, so that they'll want us to be around, so that they won't harass us, so that they won't shame us, then harass me and shame me because I stand on the rock, the word of God that says Jesus Christ is the king and that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lord and that Jesus Christ is the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14 and verse 6. You can shame me on social media. You can talk about me all over the internet, but the bottom line is I will not be moved. I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and the church needs to be like that same tree planted by the rivers of waters. We must and should not be moved because we understand who Jesus is as the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. If your church has lost its identity, you need to dial the spiritual 911, and you need to get back to the Word of God, and you need to get back to the Bible as soon as possible. You need to restore the authority of the Word and the authority of Jesus Christ back into your church. It's not about men. It's not about personalities. It's not about man-made founders and man-made ideas and man-made institutions. It's about putting Jesus where he belongs, at the head, at the beginning. It's about taking back what truly belongs to God, and that is the righteousness that can be found in this book. You know, we've said a mouthful today, but as we close... Jesus Christ is the one we should follow. He is the only key to restoring the identity of the church. And when the identity of the church is restored, as we'll learn in uh, future lessons, when that identity is restored, you begin to see things happen in the church like you have never understood. My friends, now is the time, today is the day, to sit down, and examine ourselves and see whether we are truly, truly being the church that you can read about in the Bible. See whether we are truly enshrined and enthroned Jesus as the head. My friends, man does not belong in that spot, only Jesus. You know, the Morning Touch is brought to you by the Chaplaincy for the Homeless and the FSBC in Glendale. We hope, trust, and pray that this has given you something to think about. Jesus is the one that we should follow. Jesus is the one that we should respect. Jesus is the one that we should honor. Jesus is the one who should be in the lead. We're going to talk more about that next time. God bless you and keep you. We'll see you next time on The Morning Touch. <music>